<laughs> okay, dear readers and viewers, uh, today we have with us Miha Loga. Uh, he is the father of what is known in Uganda and now across the border in Rwanda as the Gorilla Highlands. Gorilla Highlands is not just a geographical area, it's a movement. It is a popular movement in the meantime to help promote this beautiful part of Uganda and I'm just giving you a little sweep that you can see what Lake Bunyoni looks like. Amazing, isn't it? Yes. And when Miha came to Uganda, he will and tell you... this lake is my home. He can tell you right now, you, you know, when he came and everything. Uh, he found this place so enchanting that he grew roots and established himself. Uh, Miha, when did you come to Uganda? Uh, what brought you to Africa? And do explain a little bit about what made you launch Gorilla Highlands and be such an ardent and strong supporter of this part of East Africa. So, I came to Uganda for the first time in uh, 1999. And um, honestly speaking, I was not unlike most people in the world, having very, very strange picture of the continent um, in my mind. Uh, it was my studies that brought me here. I was looking for a case study for my bachelor's degree thesis. And I honestly chose Africa as an example of a continent with problems because my question was how new information communication technologies could help the developing world. And I chose Africa as an example. I had zero interest in the continent because in my mind it was something different to what you have just seen when Wolfgang shared with you the picture of Lake Bunyoni. Um, Uganda was at the cutting edge at that point. Um, they were really bringing a lot of internet points to villages and doing other uh, technology projects. So that's how I chose Uganda. But already when I was browsing magazines and doing my research, I joked to my friends that uh, the greenness and the fresh waters of Uganda could very well prove to be poison for me, something irresistible. I didn't take it seriously, but uh, it turned out to be just like that. In about a month of being in East Africa, I also went to Kenya and Tanzania. I made up my mind that that was my place to be. And you're now here for 18 years. Yeah. And you've established yourself. Gorilla Highlands is closely linked and associated with your name. Tell, <laughs> us, about, tell us about the Gorilla Highlands. What triggered it <laughs> well, and how did it evolve over the years? I would uh, much prefer that connection to be kind of geared towards all the people here. I was the initiator. You were the but, catalyst. Yes, but I want people to take ownership. Most of my work is about getting people on board and showing the why it makes sense. It's about pulling resources to promote this wonderful part of Africa and then bringing um, money, self-respect and all kinds of other benefits to local people through the means of tourism. By education, I'm a journalist and a development worker. I am not really a tourism professional, but because of my long experience in the scout movement, uh, I ended up doing activities that any girl or boy scout would love, hiking and canoeing trips in the region. Um, so I am part of tourism, but my main interest is developmental. How can we harness these amazing resources to help people without handouts, giving them some respectful uh, quality means of making a living and being proud of what they have. And validate their being. Totally. Now, uh, Gorilla Highlands is very much community-based. Yeah. Uh, whatever you've done, whatever I've followed over the years and published on, on, on my blog over the years, everything has to do with the community. 
bring benefits of tourism down to the grassroots. And of course you have developed hiking trails, you've developed mountain biking trails, you've not, developed, not yet, not yet. You've biking, developed not yet. trails by canoe across this yeah. lake and even in some other lakes. Uh, and you're using homestays and uh, very down-to-earth accommodation. Uh, Very down-to-earth, mostly camping, yes. Cam camping in villages. Uh, which captures, of course, the attention of many young people to come here. But, but also older, also people with yeah. money, you know, those who are looking for something authentic. That's An adventure, what they want. They, intrepid travelers. You see, in many ways, what we do is considered adventure tourism. But it's basically cultural tourism, community tourism with an adventure element. So some people love it for the hiking, others love it for the completely unique experience of being able to spend the night in an African village and not feel like a tourist but like a guest. Yeah. Interact, you know, chat with uh, whoever is feeding you. And like a friend of the family almost. Exactly. They give you a feeling that you are a friend. Some people meet you in a way that you, th you think that you are maybe a long lost relative. Yeah. And that touches you and is something unique. Today you told us after part one of the Gorilla Highland Silver Chef competition, and I come to that in a moment, that you are in the final stages of incorporating a booking engine into the Gorilla Highlands website. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. W what was the primary driver to take that quantum leap in technology from being just a website, and an excellent one for that matter, and going into uh, booking accommodation and booking tours here in this part of East Africa? Well, we actually began with an interactive ebook, so it's, we've always been multimedia creative. Then a lot of video and everything, and I never thought in terms of a booking system until another partner uh, looked at the videos we had online and he said, okay, great, you're giving me videos, but how do I book? How can I move to action from the point of viewing? And that's where the booking system idea came about. And it's just another way of opening up the region, giving people an idea of what yep. is possible and making it smooth and uh, safe and reliable when you want to book basically anything around here from accommodation to activities and, and yeah. even transport. And of course it's not just down to the grassroots accommodation and homestays. Uh, I just want to show our viewers a little view of Bird's Nest. This is Bird's Nest Bunioni. It's a resort right on the lake. It has something like 15 rooms. Uh, it's not a five-star resort, but it is a place which certainly can be called the best in this part of uh, the Highlands. Here on the lake, it's certainly without rivals. And it shows that uh, I've eaten the food, I've slept here, it's very comfortable rooms, uh, it's a very rustic setting. I can only say that, you know, any kind of tourists will be able to come here and use it as a base and leave a happy customer. So your booking system includes Bed Nest 2 and all the other everything little resorts which are available around the lake. Everything that we do yeah. is uh, from the lowest still acceptable and well done level to the highest. We don't want to limit people. So all segments are covered all by... Segments because really it's not for everybody uh, to go and camp in a village. Yes. So you might base yourself at Bird Nest and do a day activity and come back to your hot shower and great uh, restaurant food and everything else that you want. So we don't want to exclude anybody, yes. but we want to sell the idea of community tourism and cultural tourism to everybody again at all income levels. Um, so on that, on that, uh, initial hiking and trekking uh, idea that we now call the Gorilla Highlands Trails, we built all kinds of other add-ons. Because once, once you have a seven-day hike through the Gorilla Highlands region, the person asks, okay, but how do I get there? Yeah. How do I come to the starting point? Then you need to add uh, 
car transport from Kigali Airport to wherever it, it begins. So over time, which you is develop. A, which is actually very interesting. You know, people who know a little bit about our region they say, "Hey, you know, this is in Uganda, and you are talking about Kigali." But matter of fact is that Kigali uh, is only about two and a half hours away from here, isn't it? Kigali is much closer. And uh, it's much closer. The roads are very good. The border crossing is very easy. With a new uh, East African common tourist visa, you pay one fee and you can cross into Uganda as many times as you want. You can even go to Kenya. Uh, so it's, it's also, it's also an unusual yeah. African city. It's a very nice starting yes. point because it's not what people expect. It's not chaotic. It's, yeah. not, it's beautiful, green, clean, organized. <laughs> Just what you want yes. when you're a little bit itchy before you make your first. And African you can adventure. combine it, of course, with the, you know other activities in Rwanda. Uh, there is plenty to see. Uh, there is uh, Lake Kivu. There is Akagera National Park. There is Nyungwe Forest National Park, which I, in one of my articles, once called the Enchanted Forest. <laughs> uh, there is a good reason for that. Uh, but for, for my readers and viewers, it's important to understand the vicinity of this part of Uganda, that we are closer to the capital of Rwanda, Rwanda than yeah. to our own international airport in Entebbe. And driving here from Entebbe can take you easily nine hours. Four uh, and uh, from Kigali, it's a very quick ride. You arrive in the morning and, hey presto, you're here for lunch. Exactly. Talking about lunch, the reason I'm here uh, as one of the judges of this year's third uh, Gorilla Highland Silver Chef competition is uh, the highlight on your social calendar as Gorilla Highlands. You know, this I, I think is the, 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 the pinnacle of activities mm. at, in, in the year. And this year we have 12 uh, competitors, uh, several of them from Rwanda actually. And we had morning shift already. Our chefs prepared some amazing dishes when it came to taste, to presentation, to creativity. Uh, myself and my fellow judges were very impressed about that. And of course, we are looking forward to what the chefs balloted for the evening session. They are now cooking dinner and again a starter and the main course. We are looking forward to what they will produce. But Recalling my first visit to this part of the country, this building itself was almost a ruin in those days. That was in the, in the early 1990s, you know, not long after I'd come to uh, Uganda. And culinary skills were almost absent. Today, I think a lot of resorts and small tented safari camps and, and, and small lodges have really started to embrace uh, good food. And I think, well, you are better positioned to explain your logic why you launched that competition, but I think our readers are already getting the drift. Uh, so improving skills, creating fellowships, uh, creating networks, and building on local talent. Go on, you know, uh, it's not me who's answering so these questions. It actually all began here at the bird nest when I was really impressed with their pastries. I really saw their kitchen as amazing and I said, let's celebrate that, let's have a competition. So that was more, that was four years ago. It took a year to actually make it happen. And now we are kind of full circle. We are back at the bird nest for the first time we have Wolfgang actually with us. All kinds of other achievements have been, have been uh, successfully made this time. So now we've kind of completed the picture on this side of the border and next year we are going to be in Kigali, Rwanda where we are still bringing the whole idea of Gorilla Highlands too and where I these days spend half of my time anyways. So bringing chefs from Rwanda and Uganda together to just at the end of the day highlight what they know because every year we have about 10, 12 competitors and we have not had a bad one so far. Yeah. From, from different parts of our Gorilla Highlands region. And um, when they come, they learn. There is always an amazing feeling of companionship. They don't come to, to compete with some enemies from other lodge. They come as friends and they do their best. And the karma of the event is always very, very beautiful. 
because it's about sharing and learning more than about beating somebody. Uh, because at the end of the day, only one person can win. That actually was one of the impressions we as judges got this morning, that uh, some of the chefs asked each other questions mm. and got helpful answers. And the result, I think, was evidence that uh, sharing little kitchen secrets can go a long way to improve the uh, presentation of food and the quality of food which is offered in hotels and lodges and resorts in this part of the country. Yeah, so that is definitely what we are helping with as we are also celebrating. It's not that we started from nothing and it's, we needed to look for good chefs, no. Even the first year we organized it, we had amazing chefs coming. But of course, with the event, we are giving it an extra push. Yes. And good food is essential for today's travelers. Whether you're a foodie or not, you want to eat well. And Not uh, just a square meal. You like some enlightened cuisine to tickle your taste buds and tickle your eyes. Yeah, and we actually challenge our chefs with local resources, so they do something creative with what is yeah. locally available, so it's the best of both worlds. Presentation is, I would say, world class, ingredients are local, uh, that's what we And organic. To, oh, Everything you get here is organic. Completely organic. Yeah. Miha, to round up, where do you see Gorilla Highlands in a couple of years? You have today, during your presentation after lunch, uh, already uh, explained that the geographical reach of the Gorilla Highlands has expanded. It now goes down all the way to Queen Elizabeth. It goes to Lake Mburu, uh, Lake Nabugabo, uh, which is in Uganda. Lake but Kivu. Lake same, Kivu as well. Uh, Akagera. And, uh, you, you know, so uh, the, the geographical boundaries have already been pushed. Where do you see Gorilla Highlands in a couple of years? You told me many, many times that this is a destination in its own right. Mm. Where do you want Gorilla Highlands to be positioned in a couple of years? In the local market, in the regional market, and of course overseas. Well, number one, I need to admit that it's a big dream, but it's a worthwhile dream. We want Congo to be part of it one day. Because, again, tourism depends on stability, but can also bring stability. So Gorilla Highlands in Congo would again help Congo get its things together. And it's also the natural part of the region. And, and it's only a stone's throw away. It's only a stone. Even these days we encourage people to go and, and visit Niragongo, the active yeah. volcano in Congo, as a, as a trip of a couple of days. So we are already engaged with Congo, but we don't dare to officially include it because it's definitely not stable enough and it could damage our brand if something bad happened in what we call the Gorilla Highlands region, who would yeah. care whether it's Congo or, or Uganda or Rwanda? So, outside of that, like, honestly, we might grow into covering the whole Rwanda and Uganda one day, because as a tourist, as a visitor to the region, you don't care how some Micha or Wolfgang defines the region, you're looking for highlights. You, you want to get the best out of it. So, we currently have a well-defined uh, region uh, around the city of Kigali and uh, Giseni and Lake Kivu, up to Kinshasa. Yeah, beautiful region, a nice circuit for yeah. anybody who wants to do it, with the chance of then leaving the region through Entebbe, close to the capital of hey, Uganda, Kampala. You come across Kampala. the border to yeah. Kisoro, you do yeah. Kisoro, Lake Mutanda, Windy. Uh, forest, the, uh, the, 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 the Batwa trails. Yeah. Uh, the two parks, um, Queen Elizabeth, the Savannah Park yeah. in Uganda and the Savannah Park yeah. in Rwanda, Kajera, they are actually very complementary. What one has, the other one doesn't have. So it's a beautiful combination, you yeah. can connect them. So it's already, it's already a nice offer. But like when, when, we are, when we are thinking about Silver Chef as a competition, at the end of the day, we could invite chefs from the wider uh, region as well, in terms of Rwanda and Uganda, because it's all about excellence and, and sharing the idea. So the, the ge geographical uh, definition at the end of the day doesn't care, it doesn't matter. Somebody who comes from abroad will not 
it's not going to care about that. What matters is bringing quality to the experience of this person and uplifting everybody as far as we can go. So somewhere between Uganda, Rwanda and Congo, the future of the Gorilla Highlands region is definitely found. How far we are going to go and how deep, nobody knows. But uh, in the first uh, five, six years, there's been some great progress and uh, there is no reason for it not to prosper in the future. Well, on that note, thank you very much. Uh, great insight into what you've been doing and what your plans are. And I wish the Gorilla Highlands the very best as a destination in its own right in beautiful East Africa. Thank you, Wolfgang. Uh, from, from your mouth into the global tourists' uh, ears. Well, fingers crossed and until we meet again. Thank you. Bye.